Republic Aviation started the Thunderchief project to replace the RF-84 Thunderflash. The Thunderchief was intended primarily for supersonic, low-altitude penetration to deliver a single, internally carried nuclear bomb. This placed the emphasis on low-altitude speed and flight characteristics, range, and payload. Traditional fighter attributes such as maneuverability were a secondary consideration. Initially, the U.S. Air Force placed an order for 199 aircraft, but this was soon reduced to 37 fighter bombers and 9 tactical reconnaissance aircraft. The first prototype, the YF-105A, flew for the first time October 22, 1955. It was powered by a Pratt & Whitney J-57, and reached the speed of Mach 1.2 on its maiden flight. The production version F-105B had a redesigned fuselage to conform to the area rule, and a more powerful Pratt & Whitney J-75 engine, which made the aircraft able to reach the speed of Mach 2.15. In March 1956, the U.S. Air Force ordered 65 F-105Bs and 17 RF-105Bs. The MA-8 fire control system, an APG-31 ranging radar, and K-19 gunsight were integrated to allow toss bombing with nuclear weapons. Five F-105C trainers were also planned, but both the trainers and the RF-105 variants were cancelled in July 1956. The first production F-105B was accepted by the Air Force on May 27, 1957. Republic proposed an all-weather F-105D variant in 1957. The F-105D had an enlarged nose and radome housing for the NASG-19 Thunderstick bombing and navigation system. The instruments in the cockpit were adapted for all-weather use, and the ability to carry the TX-43 nuclear weapon was added. The F-105D was also updated with a better ejection seat, additional armor, improved gun sights, and electronic countermeasures pods on the wings. The D model flew for the first time on June 9, 1959. A two-seat trainer variant, the F-105F, was also produced. During the Vietnam War, dozens of F-105Fs were converted into anti-radar wild weasel aircraft. These aircraft were further developed into the F-105G model. The F-105 had an internal bomb bay, originally designed to carry a single nuclear bomb, but typically held an additional fuel tank. The aircraft featured four underwing and one centerline pylon and one M61 Vulcan cannon on the left side of the nose. A short-range AIM-9 Sidewinder air-to-air -air missile could be carried on each of the outer wing pylons. Pilots criticized the F-105 for being massive in size, and the aircraft had a troubled early service life. However some pilots were won over by the aircraft's responsive controls, strong performance at high speed and low altitude, and its electronics. The F-105B entered U.S. Air Force service in August 1958. Soon the avionics and the fire control system of the aircraft proved to be problematic. 150 maintenance hours were needed for each flying hour. Like the F-105B, the F-105D's early career was plagued with maintenance problems and in-flight failures. The first F-105 overseas units were formed in West Germany in 1961. The units operated the F-105D, and they had a primary tactical nuclear strike role for NATO. The F-105D was also deployed to the Japanese island of Okinawa. The U.S. Air Force gradually changed the F-105 mission from nuclear interdiction to conventional bombing. F-105Ds were upgraded and the aircraft's capacity was increased to 16 bombs on underwing and fuselage centerline hardpoints. Equipment to launch AGM-12 bullpup air-to-ground missiles was also added. In June 1961, an F-105D could deliver a payload three times heavier than American four-engine heavy bombers of World War II. Although the F-105 had a troubled early service, it became the dominant attack aircraft early in the Vietnam War. The F-105 could carry more than twice the bomb load farther and faster than the F-100. On a typical mission over North Vietnam, the aircraft would carry five 450 kilograms or six 340 kilograms bombs. 395 F-105s were lost in the war, out of a total 833 produced. The F-105 was withdrawn from U.S. Air Force service after the Vietnam War. 
The Thunder Chief continued to serve in the Air Force Reserve and in the Air National Guard. The last F-105G was retired in 1983.